Good morning, everyone. First, by entrepreneurs, we don't just mean co-founders like you would have seen in the title of this event. We mean hustlers, we mean doers, we mean dreamers, we mean bringers of those essential social changes, right? So to discuss this, we have with this four wonderful women, like I already mentioned, uh, we have Ramya Durga. She's joining us all the way from California. She is the founder of Uwood Consulting and she specializes in financial transformation empowered by digital. Hi, Ramya. Looking forward to hearing some hardcore financial aspects from you. Hi, Kupita. It's a pleasure being part of this panel. Thank you for this. We have with us Jaya Dutta. She's a proprietor of Delegate Learning Solutions. She's a classic example of this entrepreneur that we've been talking about, right? Where she markets, she sells, she manages, she delivers. She pretty much runs a one-woman show, uh, of course, with an extended team that she's supported by. Welcome, Jaya. Thank you. Thank you, Papita. Thank you all. We have with us Kiran Lakshmikant. She's the CEO of Headhunters India, an executive search firm. She's the second generation entrepreneur who has taken up a scaling path for an organization that has been very successful for 33 years, which was a pleasure having you with us, Kiran. Thank you, Papita. Thank you for that introduction. And finally, we have with us Shimonti, who couldn't join us with video because of some technical issues. Nevertheless, we want to hear some in inspiring stories from her because she's literally living each one of our dreams. Okay, She's living in the Vegas of India. She has moved her life there and set up a very successful business. She also has a rich experience in branding and marketing communications. Looking forward to hearing some inspiring stories from you, Shimonti. Thank you, Pupita. I mean, I know that everybody envies the fact that I'm talking and sitting in Goa. But yes, I have my stories to tell and challenges to share. So thank you for having me. Sure. So that's exactly what we want to hear about the hardships of the realities of being the entrepreneur, right? So without any further delay, we'll just jumpstart the session. With the first time. Yes, Papita. Uh, you know what happened is that when we, when I came uh, to Goa and uh, I had left my corporate space and I'm, I actually thought that I had worked for 15 years and so I'm going to take some time out and, so, and chill and uh, rejuvenate my mind because 15 years of a lot of hardships. But you know what? It didn't work out that way. I went into deep depression and you know, because once you get used to working and being engaged and doing something challenging, you just cannot say that you're going to be sitting and chilling. So that's when uh, clearly I decided to bring my passion, my love and my desire to do something creative together. So this is when I brought, uh, you know, my son is a chef and he was in the US at that point in time. So I said, what are his skill sets? I want him to come back. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted my son to come back from Texas and uh, see if he could, you know, be, you know, because Goa is a great tourist destination. There's lots of restaurants. And that was a challenge too, because I wanted to know what is unique that we could bring to the table. So I brought him back and then there was, we set up the restaurant. We are the only smokehouse in Goa. So I was very clear on doing something unique. I was very clear on being the best in my space. And I knew that Chef Arjun was really the best in his space in terms of smoking meat. It, it's a it's a technique he picked up in US. So uh, yeah, I mean, it was great that I knew his skill set. I set up the restaurant. We just were picking up and then COVID happened. And that was a huge challenge because not only did I have to face the challenges of a restaurant which had to be shut down, I also had to face as a mother to be told, see mom, I told you I didn't want to come back from the US and see what's happening. But, you know, to explain to him this was a global phenomenon and just not in Goa. And then encourage, motivate him and encourage and motivate myself, my investors who were with me in this project. So it was a very difficult task. But let me tell you, Papita, because the restaurant was shut, I started a COVID friendly home food business in the first month of actually the lockdown hitting Goa. So because we were having issues, but then I had this bunch of friends who were working from here or who were young, who were creative and they didn't want to cook at home and they trust me because they know me, the hygiene standards that I maintain. So, I mean, my son, that was so under 
his dignity to start something from home but i created a workstation i created a workspace i you know we set up a beautiful uh, kind of a hygienic kitchen everybody was wearing masks and gloves and you know we were going through that phase and little little ways we were trying to keep busy this was primarily my way of keeping my investors and my son you know just to keep them busy so that i could figure out what i wanted to do in the future and going forward and then in the second month i started a biryani the biryani thing in goa was not doing so well so in in spite of having a very american uh, restaurant i decided to do biryani i know it sounds so silly because i'm from this massively corporate background but i just kept doing things with my hands and legs and i kept going you know so i kept going to think that okay we have to sustain ourselves we have to stay alive and we have to stay motivated to do this so these are my little steps that i had to share with you these are i'd like to hear from jaya how did she manage uh, how did delegate solutions manage the pandemic for us uh, strangely pandemic was a very positive thing that happened you know in our line of business because we are into as you know training into uh, providing learning solutions design learning and design solutions to companies and most companies were switching from the regular classroom kind of training environment into an online training environment and so for for me pandemic was <laughs> in that sense great because i was getting more work i was busier than ever before and i was doing things which were not really any different from what i was doing earlier because in in my kind of space in my kind of in my line of business we essentially have a huge network of people working with me who working from various locations so in that sense it's not really like an office office environment that i'm working in so despite the fact that the offices were closed despite the fact that we were you know working from home so to speak it wasn't any different it wasn't any different at all it was in fact pretty much the usual and we were doing the same kind of work that we've been doing before the pandemic and nothing's really changed barring the fact that probably before pandemic we were doing more of in my, in my area of business there's something called blended learning which is a combination of online learning and classroom training now we were doing more of online learning and less of classroom training that was the only thing that was different but other than that the pandemic did not impact us at all so for us as trinine and network again we also believe in this lean business model without frills right so we also don't have an office space dedicated no rent no overheads at all so and a lot of our customers started thinking about digital and from being a luxury in their budget it moved to being essential in their budget so it has been definitely a blessing in disguise for us what do you think kiran how how was it for you as a hr solutions provider i mean like pretty much we also steered through a lot of it i mean like from being seen as a leader in search with the tier one it firms and stuff like that of course all that you guys have mentioned has happened basically which is like you know be lean in your cost structure and we also specifically started targeting more last mile delivery healthcare edutech the more happening sectors in which evolved in this very clearly which were ahead in the race in the digital side itself and then we also you know like sort of uh, repositioned ourselves a lot of international inquiries started coming in because it you know people just started looking across borders across geographies we've also been able to sort of be more agile and nimble in our approach so we've like actually faster delivery and we've also ensured that we are able to extend our uh, service uh, this thing we've also launched into leadership consulting and new services have been there so as you know all of us have uh, you know experience it's probably just how you reinvent yourself in the need of the hour and uh, i guess it's helped in the overall way beautiful so, techniques coming out of this discussion one to kind of mix up your product assortment to your audience another one to mix up your audience if you know go instead of going after your traditional target audience you you know kind of flipped and looked at uh, who has money and who has the need to spend during the pandemic and started targeting them that's a beautiful technique again kiran i'd like to hear from ramya who is actually from across the borders did you also spend some money here in india what happened during pandemic so for me uh, it's somewhat like jaya's situation right so my work is around uh, helping the finance organization with the financial transformation especially on the financial planning and analysis and across companies if you look at the department which has become more busier uh, is the fpna organization because with pandemic hitting them they had to revisit their business strategy and then they have to 
revisit like what resources they are going to reallocate from already what they planned on and how they are going to reallocate right this exactly is the area where i help uh, the finance organization with uh, like okay we are not going to do this manual how we can like make make the process more with the more of actionable data and repeatable analysis right so my work became more relevant at the time of pandemic so during the initial time maybe i would say like till half half like till like mid midway of 2020 there has been a little slow down in the pipeline right so at that point in time i had to kind of uh, look at okay how i'm going to reposition myself so that it's not going to be a big bang approach for anybody where i can slice it down and and give it as a chewable chunk for each of the organization still it is more relevant but during the pandemic it kind of gave more sense for the organization they started realizing this kind of work is more essential and they reallocated but their budget towards the fpna activities that i am doing on so the second half of it uh, this pipeline started getting more streamlined so so i would say it's a, it's a kind of mix i really didn't have to do too much other than just thinking how i'm going to in a way that kind of gave me an idea to like start opening a different business line which is going to help a small segments on a continuous basis right so that's the only change it's a kind of a opening for us at the same time from the pipeline perspective or in terms of the revenue uh, pretty much like jaya situation perfect so there are things beyond our control in the environment that seriously impacts our business just like the pandemic that we discussed jaya i'd like to hear from you how do you see these macro trends affecting your business how much of a small we are even if we are a micro enterprise or uh, an um, sme and how do you take advantage of these policies or platforms that the government provides like startup india and all that so in in my line of business uh, essentially papita what we focus on we what we believe in rather is customer segmentation so we have customers divided into three specific segments so there is one segment of customers that is constantly growing so they they constantly looking if hiring people like if they're growing exponentially and they they're constantly looking for training for those kind of people and then there is the second set of customers who are growing in a niche area who are trying to carve a space for them in in a particular area and so they're looking at training very specific in that area so something to do with artificial intelligence or in around that around gamification and stuff like that so that that would be the second kind of audience that we're catering to and the third type is the type that has budget constraints that is not really in a position to spend too much it's a chicken and egg kind of a situation where they have to train their people this you know, enhance the skill sets to be able to make more money to be able to get better projects to be able to do it better for themselves as an organization so this this customer segmentation this division is something that we always keep in mind when we are going out and approaching our, our customers this a gives them a better experience b it also helps them it's kind of a personalized approach because what it does is that i'm i'm not going and just making a generic offer to the organization anymore what i'm saying is that okay i i understand your business i understand your line of business and this is what i would suggest you do or this is what i would suggest that you go for so my approach is based entirely on this model that what what is it that my customer can afford to, uh, can uh, go with what is it that i can provide which will suit their needs so if my policies my the tools that i offer i would not go to a a small company a company with budget constraints and I, I offer them you know the works that i'll give you this and i'll give you that and i because that's not what they are looking for they're looking for quick solutions they're looking for uh, effective 15 minute 20 minute kind of training programs which which they can just go go ahead with and implement right away they're not looking for something like 2 hour 3 hour full blown 8 days kind of a training program so that is the approach that i pretty much take when you do that and you have not just delighted your customer you've also ensured that it fits into their scheme of things totally the perfectly they they've, they've got exactly what they want and that the tools the, the stuff that they need the investment that they need to make is bare minimum and 
the pandemic was once a moment when this uh, or a phase this came into light even more for us you know because there were lots of these small time companies that were approaching me with a lot of work that they needed and fast work that they needed and fast turnaround time now in a situation like that if i told them that i'll give you x y z and it would take me 3 months or 4 months to make this delivery happen then i won't be doing justice to what need is so customer satisfaction personalizing it to the extent that the customer is happy with what they're getting is what we we believe in what we do customer centricity is the prime thing that delegate learning solutions believes in and we we go by that we start yeah when you talk about customer uh, centricity and customer delight i have a question in mind that you just can't avoid because on one end you are focusing on customer delight on the other end you are facing issues in the back end in the operations particularly to people like kiran because she has a larger team and a larger written agenda uh, to attend to right so how do you manage this customer delight when you have uh, churn among your employees when you have cash flow issues what are some tactical things that you do kiran to manage these things without compromising on customer delight so we just actually understand typically it's like in a restaurant probably shimon will understand there are a lot of tables over there and it depends on who wants which dish at what point of time something similar to that to keep it very simple so we just tend to prioritize we have an abc analysis and we also since we are a retained search firm we also you know have, we have a principle where wherever it's a retained search mandate that gets priority so we juggle between you know, the urgency to close the retained bit of it and also the kind of talent and the talent pool that's available and we manage between uh, and i mean i guess with pandemic work from home and you know with uh, digitalization being so rapid it's like almost seamless the kind of uh, ability to scale so it's I, i don't see this as a challenge really in terms of handling requirements what is really the need of the r is to understand exactly what kind of solution you can provide which is most uh, it's more more from customer delight i will say it's more about addressing the customer pain point that is the real solution and that is what i am trying to at least uh, focus on which means like exactly get into what so often we might get a requirement for a hire a senior hire but if that is not going to address the customer right now like we had a chro requirement we move that into actually telling them that you might need more of a leadership consulting assignment kind of a thing because it's a second generation entrepreneur there once again and it's a smallish firm and getting in a chro at that level there are you know a lot of senior people around and that might not go well so probably understanding the you know the ethos and the background in which the situation is there and addressing to that point of how do we actually address your sol- problem inst- and fix that solution instead of trying to see if we can actually you know do a closure there or if that is a service that we can render and so i'm, I'm just trying to put the customer ahead of our uh, need and invariably it works so yeah i, I see your perspective perspective of marrying your offerings in your kitty to the exact pain point the customer would have but then it's really hard for me to get get some insights from y'all on the financial aspect of it because they, to make this marriage happen you also have a underlying cash flow requirement there so i go to uh, ramya now with this question of financial management in startups um because of all the funds that been raised the trillions of dollars of funds that been raised in the world only 2.2% or so is raised by women entrepreneurs so that is the uh, data fact hard data fact for you so ramya what do you think are different techniques that entrepreneurs use for financial management or raising could you give us some tips on raising funds from venture capitalists or different capital structures that one could go for So personally for my company I didn't go for any fundraising right so I'm in the services industry uh, pretty much I bootstrapped and and the way I bootstrapped is I was like managing my business on one end and then um, on the other side I was uh, doing as an uh, independent consulting so that I had my revenue stream coming in at which I was funneling into my uh, company so personally I needn't how to go for the fundraising and uh, if i just think that to your question on why the percentage of uh, women uh, fundraisers are been like very very low right so it's it's a question of um, i i would say it's more of a self denial right so like always having a feeling okay we we lack something uh, in compared to others right so that's other thing that's one thing and the other the other i would say the other thing is uh, 
there's nothing to lose and that's one of the hesitation is the biggest part where uh, women have when they have to go for a fundraising right that that's one of the biggest factors which is contributing to this uh, lesser amount of being fund being raised by the uh, women i'd say if you ask me i would say it's a, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a common sense of how we manage the cash flow at, the, at home right how we how we budget for it like whether we anticipate in in future and then accordingly whether we have the fund either it's bootstrap or we need to go for the funding like we we can raise it through like friends and family or we are like going to go for the external funding so it's it's more of a since i'm coming from a finance background i always think it as a okay this is a no, normal or a common sense which we will have which we apply in our day to day activities at home right the way we manage the budget at the home exactly is the way we need to run our business as well right we cannot be like spending the money and that is one of the challenges i see with a lot of the startups also today because like most of most of the startups they all are been uh, by the engineers they all are run by the engineers founded by the engineers right they they really do not have too much of focus towards the finance until it becomes emergency for them until it becomes a necessity they they really do not focus on that aspect they have no no idea about like how much they are how much expenses they need to anticipate and how much inflow is going to be in there and what is the gap between their inflow and the outflow and that's what is one of the biggest reasons for the failure of many of these startups right so in in terms of financial management it's a very basic common sense though we call it with all the big terminologies from from like okay this is the asset this is the liability debit credits forgetting about all this this is a very very basic thing with the way we run our family the way we budget for our family every month or like every day that's exactly how we need to look at your company expenses in in terms of the cash management as well and of course to manage the cash there are different ways in which we can raise the funds maybe may from your own pocket or or from your friends and family and there are like other avenues of like raising the funds but yeah management is just that's just a very interesting parallel that you've drawn you know a startup is very much like a family in so many aspects right keeping one leg in the present and one in the future thinking about what's coming next while you're running the show today managing the finances you know spending time on relationships building relationships with your uh, employees so very interesting comparison that you've uh, drawn ramya so i'll take this question and extend it to shimanti because that's a very really capital intensive business that she has started why this shift from a very set successful corporate path to something that you have not done before and how did you manage this uh, financial aspect of business you know something like they say behind every man there is a successful and a supportive woman i believe that behind every woman there has to be has to be is somebody to inspire you is it your husband is it your children so i was very clear on the inspiration so the whole idea of moving for for in bangalore and he was in goa and we were uh, almost managing this long distance relationship because i had to be there dedicated for my son who was going to finish college and go away to the us but the, after that it, it, um i think i think i have the skill of prioritizing my life very well the month he left the end of that month i absolutely came to goa because family has always been first for me whether it be the clear inspiration of why i'm doing i cannot neglect the the me in me and so the depression went away and then i decided i'm going to do something i'm going to do something where i can use and leverage my skill sets and what do i do best i realize what i do best is build relationships nurture them grow them so i spent some time building relationships within the community understood the food industry and that's when i got the confidence to say hey i think i need more or less the similar skills that i have to use in my corporate world to start that we going to do something unique in goa and i knew my branding i knew my marketing i knew my relationship building so let's do something where i can plug in this technical gap so i'm not a very fancy cook but i know what as a customer i would like to find unique in the market so that's what i went after i do not like as if he were my son we sat down we said this is how you're going to be partnering with us this is how so i sold the dream to my son i sold the dream to the investor i sold the dream to my husband and my husband just was with me all the way 
so i think i think that really worked out for me and i felt fully confident so actually when you look you have to have a little bit of an entrepreneur in you even when you're in the corporate world uh, you know papita you have to have that great experience of you know quickly managing so you would have had experiences when you're at work if this is not working then that will and you have limited budgets okay so how am i going to prioritize the budget so everything is very similar except for the fact that you take a huge risk and that end of the month that thing doesn't happen in your whatsapp your salary has come but otherwise the spirit the energy and the dedication that you need to be in the corporate world is very similar to what you need to be as an entrepreneur so she was talking about selling dreams you didn't just sell dreams but also you were working on making those dreams happen so how do you actually manage this one it's not really a one woman show in that sense of the word pavita because um, in today's day and age we are all connected we it's a one huge family that we are, we, we are a part of so i won't say in that sense my entire network is my team that's how i look at it because there have been instances where my, my client has ended up becoming my vendor and my vendor has become my client and it's been a, a pretty uh, strange scenario in that sense of the word people who've been working for me end up becoming my client and i become a client for the entire network so i won't say that i'm a one woman show though okay maybe because i represent delegate learning solutions and uh, people know me or in, in my area of business my line of business so therefore i am the one who's the face of it and who gets all the work uh, in but then it's not really a one woman show in that sense you know it's uh, my entire team my is my entire network all the people i know are the people i, I you know i'm working with and it's it's expanding every day and you can say that you know even the people who are working for me are a part of uh, my uh, my writers end up becoming my marketing people i live various roles every day so it's it's like i'm i'm marketing one day i'm writing the other day i'm uh, designing the next day so it's it's not really it's not really like you know i'm just this, this one individual who's making it all happen yes i represent the team like i said i get the work because people know me but then it's my entire network we are all connected it's it's a one big family and they are we're all responsible for making delegate learning solutions what it is today so is is that uh, a motivation for people becoming an entrepreneur because this excitement of wearing too many hats you know you're changing hats every day this kind of freedom you usually don't get in corporate world don't you think jaya yes absolutely i i strongly do believe uh, papita that if you're looking for doing various kind of things if you kind of bored in what you're doing and you want you wanting to do something exciting this is the way to go however having said that just wanting to do things is not it you've got to be prepared to work hard you've got to be prepared to make those sacrifices and the sacrifices are to the extent that you could be on a vacation and you're still working no weekends no weekend mode because there are too many players in the market in every sphere can't afford to then say that okay it's my me time right now i am not working right now and therefore i cannot cater to your needs today but uh, that's not how it will happen also because when you working your salary comes in irrespective of whether you you putting in those 10 12 hours a day day or not however when you're an entrepreneur if you're not working you're not getting anything you're not making anything okay so you have to you have to be ready to work hard but if you are willing to do that oh it's a very exciting field to be in it's very very exciting because you are doing just about everything everything you cannot say okay i was a i was a boss in my previous organization so that's where i will be you've got to be hands on you've got to be willing to you know put in that that extra bit get everything going be willing to do play these various roles and trust me if you do that I, it's it's a win win situation all the way of all the things that you told about jaya the one thing that thing struck me was the time aspect of it okay i have a young toddler at home and i find it very toxic when people expect be it your team your own team or your customers when they expect you to be on all the time over whatsapp over email picking their calls and all that what do you think ramya in this digital culture there you know initially it wasn't like that be it an entrepreneur or an employee you call it a day and that was close of business but today it isn't like that i think the pandemic actually has worsened it 
because uh, everybody is on their devices all the time and how do you even balance out your baby at home right so it's it's definitely a very challenging but one thing what i have realized over a time papita right sometimes no i i just go with like what indra nui was saying right so she she was she was mentioning like uh, learn to delegate we are very good in delegating our official work but sometimes we we really struggle to delegate our personal work right so the way i manage is like i started learning i'm still in the process of learning i'm not like completely there yet but i'm still in the process of learning but i i started delegating some of my personal work like uh, as a woman we tend to take too much responsibility in everything we do be it work or be it home we we want to be on top of everything and right that, that's all is going to happen to get to that mindset and you start delegating that kind of releases a little bit of time tension from you right the way you delegate the work and when when it comes to to exactly your question on you are expected to be on whatsapp and on email and everything right so sometimes there is a power to say no right that's what i realized over a period of time right not everybody is expecting you to be online or be available all the time right you have your own personal life like be it your family or be it your work you have your own personal life as an individual right so there is a power to say no so if there is a need we are going to be there as a mom there as an entrepreneur uh, do you really believe that somebody who is a startup who is on a building the business mode has the power to say no to oh, a of customer course. Really so? of course of course uh, why not we of course we have the power to say no right because this is this is a we are giving value and we are taking value out of them so this is a equal partnership So this is like absolutely not like oh, I have to like give myself all the time. So there is no such expectation or no such agreement with anybody. But we know responsibility as we are getting into a business engagement. We know responsibility as well. If there is the other party is having some need to be done something immediately on urgent basis, yes, we are available to make it done. But don't make it as a regular practice, right? That's what I call it as a power of no. even like last week i had to sit till 3 am to finish something for my client i i was doing it on a sunday night 3 am i was doing it but do i do it on every weekend no i don't do it on every weekend now i know like a saturday sunday is my family time of course i'm struggling to still do it, uh, put a time frame on a weekday i'm doing it on a weekends at least nowadays right so there is still a power power to say no i'm learning those tricks nowadays right so that that way i'm managing a little bit here and there but i'm still still it's it's again every minute challenge and every day challenge uh, for us that's a very critical lesson that you've shared with us ramya today this is very important for the audience who are live now and also to the audience who will be watching it over the video because it's not a sprint that we are running okay in the long run for you to run a marathon you need to have these balances if you kind of spoil these balances by over stretching today you may not be in it for the long game so talking about the long game somebody who has done this for 30 years has handed over the business to you kiran what is your vision to take the business global because a business can take two routes right one it could become a global business take a massive ipo exit and all that another one it can be a sustainable business in the domestic context and still provide a lot of value to the society neither one is better than the other right so what is your view for headhunters india and uh, in this journey do you think any challenge would be exclusive for you because you are a woman okay uh, first part of the question that you asked i think um, there is no plan as yet to you know it's not like i know what i want exactly uh, at the end of the tunnel saying that we have to be global ipo nasdaq listing i think no such stuff it's just one day at a time one step at a time and uh, right now to stabilize our team and get on to get out of the covid situation and get a good going and also one key thing that i have learned with all that has happened around is that you know we need to keep reinventing ourselves so it's not just that the covid has taught us but with various you know experiences you start off you, you understand that you know the, the need is right now more to be getting to technology driven spaces in the hr side itself and do a seamless weaving of related services as well into uh, you know seesuit search which which is a very good scope which we have not yet tapped into so that will be the first step to do that and then i think you know going global or you know setting footprints in other geographies is something that can happen as and when you want to it's like you know uh, one thing i don't know if uh, 
like how ramya said the power to decide is actually is with us so how do we carve our destiny is pretty much how good you want to be in what you're doing right now so if 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 you if you am convinced that this is the best that we can do at this point of time in this space and in this geography then we look at the next but there's no point taking everything and then trying to scale everywhere and uh, you know compromising on service or on perfection that's what i think it pretty much is to stay focused stay grounded and look at what is there right now and in terms of i wouldn't say there's any particular challenge as such for uh, being a woman entrepreneur but in in my mind i don't see a challenge but if the world sees this as a challenge then i guess they will have to come over it this but there's clearly nothing that's stopping me from you know doing what the business requires to be what is required for the business that that's the perspective there it's not oh, it's not me or it's not male ceo or it's not any particular thing it's more about how how would you drive a car that's it so it's like a female driver versus a male driver kind of thing. that's it but the car has to move that's all it's about. we have a question from gayatri uh, she has asked about do you have any entrepreneurial background once they had a business idea how did they kick start the ground work how does an idea essentially become a business uh, shimanti would you like to take this question i just wanted to say that it's very important for you and understand your environment because if you're going to get into a environment that is not uh, you know familiar your target audience study what you want to do stay focused from other people who may be get who are doing similar things maybe they got started what did they do if it's a kind of a consulting business whatever it is you will have to understand who and uh, why you really so yes uh, for example if you are opening a rest you want to understand which area you want to stand uh what's the kind of you want to understand what is it that you want to serve you want to understand aspects of business not only restaurants what is it that you're trying to deliver once you understand that once you speak to mentors see because basically if you must be having a dream so you it's either i had a dream that my restaurant's going to look like something so i know that i can get to a construction person and say make this for me like this and this is the money that i have so i will work go back and forth and figure it out so you need to keep a lot of in mind and go in that direction that's because you just need to be focused on why you started this and what you are ready to do and what you're going to achieve after that you know these little moving parts you need to get to for example a kitchen uh, equipment guy you need to go to a license guy you know you have to go to the panchayat you need to know what are the licenses that are required to run a proper hygienic legal food business so what are you going to do so that you know you have these pockets you understand the main buckets and then you go after them you literally work like how you would do it in the corporate world perfect an extension to that question would be while well, somebody is trying out an idea without an entrepreneurial background how long should they keep trying okay because there's this passion versus being pragmatic at some point one should realize that something is not working and call it quits or should they call it quits at all should they keep continuing and should they keep investing into their dreams what would you suggest to me i just feel that you have to go with your vibe you have to go with your gut feeling of when is the time to stop you are focused you don't give up that's you know something i definitely tell ever everybody but it's also okay to fail papita if you fail it's okay i mean you're not going to penalize yourself or feel oh, why did i fail maybe you fail in one business so it's okay to fail but it's really up to you your vibe your environment and people who don't take sometimes you know we women try to take very independent solo decisions try to reach out to people who can advise you i believe in that whether you're a woman or a man you know it's best when you're talking about something as intense as should i give up or not you know sometimes just a little bit of motivation can take you a long way sometimes a change in the certain way you're doing business which will come as an advice from somebody more don't think that you know everything so it's really something that it's a vibe based there is no such clear rule that you can say that let's this is the time to stop this is the time not to stop the go how you're but yes don't be a gambler you're gambling especially in certain cases with women you are gambling you're non you should know where to stop so that's really something that wisdom is something that you nurture and you build with it so talking about reaching out to people uh, shimanti there's a question from vandana 
and she's asked when things are not going right who's your go to person to get perspectives uh, i'd like all of you to take a stab at this question yes. we'd like to understand what kind of support women entrepreneurs get from their uh, ecosystem this the my husband because he is just the most fantastic human being that i have in my life and i cannot tell you uh if i'm going wrong he's the only one who'll point it to me but if i'm not going wrong and i'm just having this phase of lack of self confidence he's the first one to just doing the right thing you're just not feeling confident enough so my husband is my really jay would you go next pretty similar to what simon shivanti just said my husband is again my go to person he's he's always always encouraging me and he's he's been there for me from the work you know the day i started doing this so uh, yes he definitely has been there always and because my line of business is is the same is i'm in the same field that i was in when before in the corporate world as well while i was working so i have a few few people who i consider as my mentors who i do go to when in situations where i need need their help you know very specific to a particular problem that i might be facing in my area they are the other set that i go to for very specific issues but then overall just to you know keep me going keeping me positive keeping me keyed in my husband certainly i have a different go to person for different needs <laughs> I definitely have a very supportive system um as uh, Shimonti and uh, Jaya said uh, definitely my husband is a go to person whenever i'm emotionally down there's no specific reason there's no specific uh, issue that i'm dealing with sometimes it happens for every one of us right we get emotionally down for no reason so for those kind of emotional uplift my husband is a go to person for me right so i need not even tell him i need not even go to him he comes to me and like he uplifts me so But if, like Jaya said, are like any specific issues, then I have my mentors from the industry, so I go to them. More importantly, what I have learned in the recent days, what I'm practicing is uh, more of self help is what I'm I'm learning a lot, right? So internally, I know I'm down or I'm like facing this problem. Internally, I know so these are the group of people I need to go to. But still, something in me tells me, okay, just take a deep breath, take a break, and then you're going to find the answer for that, right? So I just completely cut off from everything, and then uh, I I try to resolve. Not that I I will just try, not even try to do. Don't act on that. A little bit of a spiritual thing is what I'm uh, like talking about. But that is the journey I'm in, which is really really helping me to cope up with with the stress that comes along with the things that you need to do, multiple things that you need to do in this uh, journey. If Ramya spoke about a little bit of a spiritual journey, I think I can talk about a little more advanced course there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's probably a little bit far more intense in the sense that uh, I just turn inwards. I just try and seek the answer myself. And when I really feel uh, there is nobody who's going to help me on the situation, it is almost amazing. It's just like a miracle. It's a God's grace. I'll have to tell you. i get the answer and that answer is probably the best answer and it is not that what i think is the answer it is probably very different from my approach if i have to go logically but it is either a gut feel or it is a combination of what you don't even think sometimes you know when bad things happen you think it is bad but actually it's not uh, falling apart it is falling in its place they say right like something like that happens and uh, every time i mean it's, it's happened so many times that i feel i just turn inwards and pause and wait for that intervention to happen and it happens so answers come at the right time so i just, you know the point is not to panic too much but it happens i mean i'm still human so i do panic <laughs> perfect so there's a question that i really i'm not comfortable or agree with sarika here but then i'm sure none of these panel members are anyway uh, you know less equipped than their male peers peers but then she the question from sarika is about if you ever feel less equipped for a role than a male counterpart if so what role and how did you overcome that i can tell you that we may not be less equipped but that definitely doesn't mean that i've never felt less equipped because when you have dissolution and when you feel that Uh, or not when you feel that when things are not going right you tend to feel less equipped to say what am i doing wrong you know this is actually connected to what has been discussed just before this where kiran ramya you know you start 
turning inward you start going to your person you start going to your go to person you start praying you put it in prayer you start inward and you seek these answers within you it is i mean it is lovely that somebody you know that's why i say that you must have a go to person sometimes you know if somebody just saying that don't worry you'll be fine that could be your parent that could be your father you're doing all right you're doing fine you're on the right track but you could do this differently so somebody with that wisdom if you have um it just helps you with that temporary superficial moment of feel not feeling less equipped you know that's the point and if you are less equipped and you feel positive about it then it's very easy to say okay i am less equipped let me see what i can do to be equipped or more equipped so that's that's a really nice way of looking at it if you are in that positive space of mind but we all go through our different challenges we all go through our different phases and i can't speak for everybody but there are times when i felt especially in the restaurant industry because i come from a very strong corporate background i'm like i am less equipped in what i know my son has set up the kitchen what is the most optimized way of setting up the kitchen that the food comes out faster quicker you know there are different thoughts and these are right the right thoughts you know when i talk to a, so i made some friends in the food consulting line there is a food community here and i keep asking the same questions that because i'm less equipped to answer those questions i'm not from that background so what do i do so i go to such people who have the knowledge and say listen i'm feeling very stressed about these things and i'm feeling like i don't know enough the the fact that i have asked those questions more than half the job is done papita then i know that i am on the right way i'm getting seeking the right answers and i'm not being uh, i'm not being arrogant or overconfident about what i bring to the table sure simanti i i see that as a continuous learning journey that's you know beyond gender it could it is common for a male or female to play in any role today right the learning never ends so don't you do have a perspective on this question yeah i i think pretty much the perspective is what shimonti was uh, saying right uh, definitely there are instances um uh, where i felt less iq but it's not in comparison with a male right it's it's general it could be with anybody it could be with another female as well or for that situation not necessarily with another person like i'm le- less equipped for this specific situation exactly the st- same steps as what shimonti has been like take okay what am i going to do to make myself more equipped if this is the field or this is the area i want to be in so that is that is the logical thinking but i have a little bit of personal j- journey which kind of that's where which led me to the spiritual path what i was talking about for the previous question right my go to person was my dad he was a serial entrepreneur of his time and he the way he brought us up like we never knew the difference of like this is a girl and a guy that's the way he brought it up he said like there's no difference like everybody is like born equally to achieve whatever they are like supposed to achieve in their life right so there's no such thought as okay i'm a, i'm a girl and there is a boy there is a comparison that's that's not the way my dna was built and so once my dad passed away my world crumbled because i felt like okay i lost myself and there was no confidence there was no ramya that that's when i started realizing no i'm still an individual here but there was an external support so far i was living on that external support which i'm grateful for even today right but at the same time that was the realization point for me to see okay then i started feeling myself unequipped in everything that i do successfully before that instance right like even like going to an office and like working on the normal thing that i work every day where i used to be very successful it's even then people are coming and asking me like ramya what would you do that but i i felt like completely dumb and numb for like few months in my life that is when i started turning spiritual started looking at inwardly and then started realizing i'm going to be the best help for myself when i go inward and then like kind of seek help that's when i started like being less dependent on external help and then started being like more dependent on myself right but your question yes this comes this often comes in but definitely there are logical steps i take like what am i going to do to make myself equipped in that situation to make myself a male or a female am i doing better than how i was doing last year that's a comparison i have for myself right so in that perspective yes i i keep equipping myself and and the way i i do it is like different ways like taking external internal introspection and learning what is needed thank you so much ramya thank you so much guys 
time has passed you know even without noticing because the the, the conversation has been so interesting so, so i was asking for one lesson that you would share with your younger self that we could also pick up because you didn't know that when you were starting your business but over the course of this journey you you bring that lesson and you want people to you know kind of apply that lesson could you share that one powerful lesson that is sticking with you today uh, i start with jaya honestly not i would change i would say nothing 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 really uh, to my younger self which would be different than what it is with me today the only thing is customer centricity that is the only one key thing that i believe in and that is what has kept me going that is what has made me you know survive this for this long in this line of business that's the only thing nothing nothing else would be any different it would be the same and kiran you you know like to see today in the eyes of what i was few years back because that brings so much more vibrance and you know a uh, color to what is being seen instead of trying to say go backwards so i would rather try and you know bring back my unbiased more unopinionated kind of uh, perception to life and to all that we are seeing because i feel you know as you start especially the entrepreneurial journey it's like long and it's it, it is a long haul where you just as you somebody said you know it's there's no break really as such even though you do feel you're taking so i i just think you know it's more important to be your true self and look at things least colored manner and that helps a lot to keep moving so yeah i would say a lot of things i would do things differently because you know papita started very young at the age of 20 uh i actually started my life i had my son when i was 20 years old so you know there's a lot of uh, evolution that's gone across with me uh, and a lot of hardships for who i am today so yes what i would tell my young self is what i just said before it's okay to fail don't penalize yourself for it don't you're not answerable to anybody for your failures it's be- you know it's because of it is your i mean you own your shit right you own your success you own your failure so it's okay to fail be conscious of your wellness your emotional and physical wellness i have neglected that tremendously when i was young i got very bogged down with my emotional approach not only at home because of what i was going through but also at work so you know i've been so there is no black and white at work and i was very young and you would just get inspired and just love one boss and not love the other with these various opinions it doesn't work like that when you're in a you know professional setup so always hold yourself hold what you think is right and wrong but there is no black and white always so try to try to find a very non emotional approach to yourself definitely that's something i tell myself even now and as i was a young girl and i went you know when i started working and i started doing well it was because i was working very hard because i had to support my family but if i had to clear my head now and talk to my young self i would tell myself that always be clear about why you are doing this because it's just not about earning money it is because you have to support your children but it is also about this is a skill set that you have you're good at something and you bloody well remember that you know, that you're good you're good at something that's why you're doing it that's why you are where you are so this is very very important to me and i don't forget my inspiration why i am doing what i'm doing so there are some me things here and there are some things about how i would deal with it in how i would deal uh, with myself at a workplace or deal with my bosses and colleagues at a workplace so yeah i mean definitely a balance of these few pieces of advice that i would think that i'll tell myself my young self wonderful piece of advice i'm taking it all for myself ramya what's your perspective i believe that the universe is conspiring to make things happen for you the way it is supposed to be right so this this really nothing for my young self to say but uh, any time and even today what i would say to myself or to anybody is like there's nothing to lose just go and explore and knock and try whatever you you want to try there is nothing to lose right the moment we have that mindset there is nothing to lose then we become so liberated and we become so courageous to go and try whatever we we want to try if you look at like most of the things whatever that's coming in is because of the hesitation so am i going to get a no from another person whether the doors are going to be knocked whether the doors are going to open or not right so there's nothing to lose if it's not like opening today it's going to open tomorrow if not the 10th door maybe the 11th door right so that's one thing which i would say for myself every day even today and then that's that's what i would i would say for everyone as well 
Thank you so much, Panul, for joining us today. Thanks to the audience as well for the wonderful questions that you shared. So of the 10,000 and odd startups that are there in India, 14% are led by women, okay? So don't be kind of, you know, carried away by only the poster messages. Even if the posters don't celebrate, there are a lot of women like the ones on this panel who are being very successful, who are bringing the change. There are startups that are run by the women, for women like uh, Falguni's Naika or Aditi's Menstrupedia that's creating awareness about uh, menstruation among school children. There are a lot of startups, there are a lot of women who are striving for change to happen. So once again, kudos to all of these women across the spectrum, across, you know, strata of the society, a very happy Women's Day to one and all. Thank you so much for joining.